So, we made it here. The first pictures are in the can and photos of the northern lights taken. In the first two episodes of Color Class Lofoten, we talked about the right equipment and planning the location. Besides that, we were able to take our first photos. This episode is about how to optimize the dynamic range of our camera by getting the exposure right. Today we're in rain. The topic today is the histogram. The aim of a clean exposure is to protect the tonal values which are presented here in the form of colors as well as possible. And we can only do that if we avoid extremes like black and white. And the histogram helps us to see if we have black or white values in our picture. If there is an accumulation of dark tonal values in the histogram, then it looks like this. And now pay attention to the following. When you have that, the colors in the sky really come into their own, but the other colors in the already darker color gamut are completely lost. When you lighten up such a photo on your computer, the values that are missing here have to be interpolated. That is possible to a certain extent, but involves massive losses. That's why I'm someone who recommends a technique called exposed to the right. If your histogram looks like this, and we all agree that that is underexposed, and you want to know where you want to get to, then I'll tell you now. You want to achieve the maximum sensor potential, and to do that, you have to realize that we have reached the limit of the first box, but we want to get to the fourth. Then every jump is an exposure value. So now we'll jump to the second. One, two, three, that was an exposure value. Not quite still one third to go, so I'll add this. And again, one, two, three. I've now done three times three. That's three exposure values. And straight away you can see I'm getting to the area that's interesting. I will try to get as far as it will go. Now it's starting to clip. Keep your eye on the color channel. Look, now it's getting interesting. If you do a raw exposure, it is so that a maximum of one color channel is allowed to clip. I'll show you the clipping. The red channel is at maximum. See that? It has gone too far to the right and is now filling up the edge of the histogram. It's brimming over. It is clipping. It's jumping off the cliff. It is leaving us. That means for us, basically, that we lose resolution in the colors of the red spectrum. However, if I turn more, you can already see the blue channel. See, now it's starting to blink. Now the blue channel is also saturated. Now you have a problem with the image processing. You can't save the fine nuances of the tonal values, like you can see in the sky here. This progress from orange to peach to apricot, these light colors as I call them. The question of course now is, what can I do to avoid my, in this case, blue and red channels tinting? I can reduce the exposure time. I'll do that and then you'll see something else. When I do that, the histogram goes to the left. That means the dark tonal values get even darker and so lose color information. That is why you should lighten it on the computer, or guys, just use a gray gradient filter.
The first thing I am usually asked is, how do I know when I should use a grey gradient filter? I have set up an image here that I quite like. When do I need a grey gradient? Look here on the left of the histogram. We have an accumulation of dark tonal values. What does that mean? That tells us it is dark. So then I go and make the image lighter. That makes the dark areas lighter, but we lose the structures and the wonderful colors in the sky. So you see, whatever you do here, if you make the image lighter, the lights will be too light. If you make it darker, the dark tonal values will be too dark. But that is exactly when we use a grey gradient. There are numerous grades of hardness and strength. The principle of a grey gradient is that you can darken parts of your image with the grey gradient filter. What we are doing now is we fill the dark tonal values and we do that using either aperture, ISO or time. I'll just extend the time here and you'll see the following. The histogram, that before had the tendency to be too dark and too light at the same time, has now spread the tonal values. So we have no very dark tonal values anymore, which is a great advantage for us, as we have outlined the puddle that was too dark before. For me, the image is now finished, so we've got that photo in the can. We've now talked about all the technical aspects of the theme contrast and it can be controlled. What I would like to do now, I want to be creative. I would like to extend the normal time structure and for that I use this here. This is a neutral density filter that just swallows light. Because it swallows light, but I still need to have the same amount of light, it means that the exposure time is extended. This has a whole range of aesthetic advantages. So now you can see here, we have a sunset situation. There is not much light. I'll just superimpose this photo I have here, which has a basic exposure of five seconds. Five seconds exposure is what I need, so the photo has the right exposure and I simply want to make it considerably longer. The approach is, I use the ND 1.8 filter. It has a linear extension factor of 64 and that is a really easy formula. We take the 5 seconds exposure time that we just had and multiply that by 64. That makes, I have already worked it out or got the app to work it out, 5 minutes and 20 seconds. And that's what I will invest in this photo. Let's see what it comes out like. How do I turn a beautiful landscape into an impressive photo? In the next episode of Color Class Lofoten, we will show you how to find the best subjects and the right angles. Together, we're going to visit the White Church of Gimsoy. Join us for the next episode of Color Class Lofoten.